passengers and polish. Nancy is a guard star. She was working on Scarlet with some polish and a rag. Wake up, Lazybone, she said severely. Your brass is filthy. Aren't you ashamed? No, said Scarlet sleepily. You're just an old fuss pot. Go away. She tickled his nose. Reneas comes home tomorrow. Don't you want to look nice? Scarloli woke suddenly. What? Tomorrow? Yes, Daddy told me. I'm going now. Nancy, stop. Do I really look nice? Please polish me again. There's a good kind girl. Now who's an old fuss pot? Laughs Nancy. She gave him another rub, then climbed down. Aren't you going to polish me? Asked Duncan. Sorry, not today. I'm helping the refreshment lady this afternoon. We must get the ices and things ready for the passengers on Scarlowe's two o'clock train. Never mind, Duncan. I'll give you a good polish tomorrow. But Duncan did mind. It doesn't fail, he complained. Peter Sam gets a special funnel, so Handel gets special wheels. Passengers get ices, and I'm never leaving polished. This, of course, wasn't true, but Duncan liked having a grievance. He began to sulk. That afternoon, a message came from the station by the waterfall. One of Scarlow's coaches has come off the rails. Please send some workmen to put it right. Duncan was in steam, so we had to go. All this extra work, he grumbled. It wears an engine out. Rubbish, said his driver. Come on. The derailed coach was in the middle of his train, so Scarlowe had gone on to the top station with the front coaches. Duncan left the workmen and brought the passengers in the rear coaches home. He sulked all the way. He arrived back just in time for his own 4 o'clock train. I get no rest, I get no rest, he complained. He was sulky and short of steam, so his driver waited a few minutes in the hope of raising more. But Duncan wouldn't try. We can't keep the passengers waiting any longer, his driver said at last. You will always think about passengers, muttered Duncan crossly, and never about me. I'm never even bullished. I'm overworked and I won't stand it. He grumbled away, broadening over his wrongs. Duncan made heavy weather the journey, but at last they reached the viaduct. This is long, high, and narrow. No one can walk on it when a train is there. Come on, Duncan, said his driver. One more effort and you'll have a rest and drink in the station. Keep your old station, said Duncan rudely. I'm staying here. He did too. He stopped his train right on the viaduct, and nothing his driver or fireman could do would make him move another yard. Scarlowe came from the top station to haul Duggan and his train to the platform. The passengers were very cross. They burst out of the train and told the drivers, the firemen, and the guard what a bad railway it was. Scarlowe had to pull the train to the top station too. Duncan wouldn't even try. The thin controller was waiting at the shed for Duncan that evening. He spoke to him severely, but Duncan still stayed sulkily. He muttered to himself, No polish, no passengers. 
in an obstinate sort of voice.